Hello guys, in this video I'm demonstrating the NEC P401's overclocking capability. As you might have read in the title, this screen actually overclocks ridiculously well with a few drawbacks, but I'll get to that later. So first things first, it's a 40 inch display. I got it at Goodwill, out of all places, for 40 bucks. Interestingly enough, there's a 35 inch normal TV LCD panel for $180 sitting right next to it. So I was like, well, uh, it's bigger, has the same HDMI or Display Port or whatever, and it's the same thing. So I'm gonna grab this one, and it's bigger. So I believe it's a plasma. Uh, it's for commercial use, I think, like business and all that. I don't think it's designed for consumers. Maybe it is. I don't know. You just don't see them often. At least this older model. Uh, this one has a successor to this one. Um, but this is actually a pretty good display. It comes with a whole bunch of features I have yet to even figure out yet. There's like remote control interface. You can actually connect them all together and have like a giant wall panel with ten of them. Things like that. I don't have more than one so I can't test those crazy features. Uh, it is 1920 by 1080p resolution. Not presently. I'll get to that also. So basically I'm displaying 800 by 600 at 60 Hertz. Um, the display's native response time is 8 milliseconds, I can't do much about that. So from being a gamer at one point in my life, I was running 144 hertz, 1080p display, 1 millisecond response time, jumping to a 1080p 40 inch screen, 60 hertz, 8 milliseconds response time. That's a pretty big jump and a whole new spectrum for me. It's kind of unnerving because everything doesn't feel as responsive and it's slower, but this the size has its perks for what I do. So let's get back to the actual purpose of the video now. So the reason why you only see a small portion in the camera angles off is because first of all I'm using my phone camera, not my actual camera, for the sake of convenience. And this tripod doesn't is not designed for this, so I'm having it balance funny, so you can't see the whole 800 by 600. Um, but the screen's actually bigger than the camera angle. I don't put it on wide angle mode yet, but basically I have it just the normal scale. 800 by 600 this is the pixel count that it would normally have usually upscales I will also get to that point and why it's not upscaled so let's actually demonstrate the high refresh rates I can achieve on this display 1080p will get me 130 Hertz no more no less um, this middle ground between 720p and 1080p has 103 Hertz limit as well 720p 206 Hertz so basically doubled uh, 768, uh, 1024 by 768, 4 by 3 resolution, 235 hertz, 800 by 600, 200, I mean 300, I can't even read the numbers, 327 hertz. So, that's a giant jump from this one to this one. Um, 327 hertz. If I am correct, that is the highest refresh rate that was ever done to date. I believe. I did a little bit of research. So I'm a lazy. I didn't look too far. It's probably like the first page of Google and the first three links. Um, but I believe this is the highest refresh rate of displays ever given off. There actually might be like laser projector displays or something like that that actually do more. I don't know. But like computer refresh rate that the computer can output this many frames. I mean, many things, frames per second essentially. That's a fly, by the way. Um, and the screen actually displaying it and syncing up, I think this is the highest ever. So, getting back to the whole point of this video, let's try it out, let's apply it. See what it says in the corner, if it shows up at all. There it goes, uh, it kind of blinks on and off. Let's, let's see, will it come back to me? 326.1 hertz. Let's apply this real quick, so we're not breaking anything my tripod sitting on my keyboard. So yes, it's applied. It's now 327 plus or minus a couple of kilohertz. But this, to my eye, I think this is 30 FPS recording right now. I didn't put 60 mode because I'm dumb. Um, but to my eye, this looks ridiculously smooth, even smoother than 144 hertz. Duh, because it's 327 hertz. How? That's ridiculous. I can't go any higher than this until like artifacts and screen garble will happen. It's weird. Um, but being at 800 by 600, this is the highest I can go. I can probably go even smaller resolution and get even higher, but this is the most comfortable I can get in size being too small. 
So let me get to screen uh, syncing and frame skipping. So you usually hear, hear like frame skipping term as in use from like rendering basis or game play. You see that frames will stutter here and there. That's all internal, like the graphics card or the processor being a bottleneck or something like that. But what's it's actually happening on the output offense here. The screen is actually cycling so many frames per second on this refresh rate, it actually will forcefully skip frames to keep up with itself. It's the weirdest thing I've never actually knew. The displays can actually struggle with their own output. But with this overclock, it's pretty intense on here. Um, by the reason why I'm downscaling instead of stretching the 800 by 600 to the full screen to enjoy the refresh rate is because frame skipping will happen on the bigger spectrum. So if I shrink it down to like the normal actual pixel width and height, the frame skipping isn't as noticeable and actually is nearly absent, which gives this refresh rate its actual purpose. Because I've, when I do the tests, the stress tests of the actual frame rate and the frame skipping, the frame skipping actually outrules the whole purpose of having a high refresh rate because it almost makes it look like 60 hertz, probably 75, 90 even, but it kind of ruins it. The higher the number gets, the higher it feels on like the actual average, the amount of frames skipped per the actual sync itself. So I'd say probably this number on the full screen would make it feel probably like 120 hertz, maybe even that. This being this small, it feels higher than 144 hertz. That's the only control I have because the other screen I use is 144 hertz. So enough of my rambling. Let's actually throw in a game. Half-Life 2 because my computer can actually output high frame rate. So maximum frame rate is 990,000. That's ridiculously high for something I can't even reach that high. So let's go to chapter 3 real quick. Um, they see if the exposure kind of balances out. So to my human eye, this looks ridiculously smooth. The camera probably won't even tell because it's probably 30 FPS, as if I recall correctly. But to my eye, this looks ridiculously smooth, smoother than anything I've ever seen, almost like an actual camera. Like I'm watching, like, I don't know how to explain that very well, but it's real life, besides it looks like blocky, old 2004 game engine graphics but it's ridiculously smooth and if I can only imagine if you have an HDR display that can go with this high frame rate and high refresh rate it would almost you can actually probably get like an unreal engine or cry engine display of like a photorealistic house and walk through it you can probably actually legitimately freak someone out and confuse them with this that's kind of off topic because this is a video about a refresh rate on this screen specifically but if I recall correctly this is the highest let's see the game probably isn't showing anywhere near a thousand but it's over 325 ish you can't see that because I just turned that on net graph enable let's see what my number are so it's over 350 so it's not doing the full justice but to my eye it looks magnificently smooth on this tiny little viewport, but besides that, I'm freaking out. And it's the coolest thing ever, but it's probably legitimately, no joke, destroying the actual display. The lifespan of this display probably got shortened, if not by half, actually 75%. So I should probably not do this for too long, unless I plan on buying a replacement that's actually supported of like 144 hertz or something. But this gameplay doesn't really do it justice through the video because you can't really see that, what I'm seeing. But nonetheless, this is ridiculously high. There it is again, 326.1 hertz being outputted. So that's about it for this NEC P401 overclocking video. Um, to kind of sum it up really quick, this is how I do it. I go through the NVIDIA control panel. I'm pretty sure AMD has its own version of this. I haven't used an AMD graphics card in a long time, so I don't know how things have changed. But you can create a custom resolution, change the refresh rate here in the video frame. Let me kind of put it up. 327's in there. I'd advise you not to do this because some displays do not actually like this and will legitimately internally break, and you can't replace that. You have to buy a new screen, so 
that is on you if you want to change that. I change it by one or two increments. I do it by five because I'm a little, you know, I live on the edge. So that's crazy stuff. So that's about it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I believe this is the highest refresh rate a display has ever displayed. So there's that. Uh, thanks for watching.